Let's make the Head in the Clouds Knit Pillow by Yarnspirations.com. Welcome back to another Yarnspirations tutorial. I'm your host, Kristen Mangus of Good Knit Kisses. Let's get started. In today's tutorial, you'll need a bulky number five weight yarn. We're using Burnett Pipsqueak in color Whitey White. For the cloud face, you'll also need about 10 yards of a medium number four weight yarn. We're using Burnett Super Value Black. In today's pattern, we are working on this super cuddly cloud pillow. It's called Head in the Clouds Knit Pillow by Yarnspirations.com. Thank you so much, Yarnspirations. We're working with the Burnett Pipsqueak yarn, which is a bulky number five weight yarn, and the Super Value yarn, which is a medium weight. And this is black. It's for the face. And we will also look at the instructions for that. The Needles that you're going to need today are a US number nine or five and a half millimeter. And I'm going to show you on a different yarn because this is so fuzzy, it may be hard for you to see the stitches. You will be excited to know we're going to demonstrate how to make the make one stitch, how to decrease in two different ways, the knit two together and the slip slip knit, and the major elements going back and forth. We're gonna go over the chart and how to read that. We're gonna be working on a cloud that's going to move and shape. So we're going to be shaping this as we go. You'll make two sides to the pillow and stuff it. I'm gonna show you all the instructions on how to get that done. So let's get started. Gather your tools and I'll see you in a little bit. Download your copy of Head in the Clouds Knit Pillow by clicking on the link in the description below. For our loom knitters out there, you're going to need a half inch or regular gauge loom. And we have more information on how to convert the pattern down in the description below. We're going to begin by casting on together. Now, just to show you again, this yarn is very fuzzy. And if I were to cast this on and start it, you would have a very hard time seeing it on camera. So we're going to work with softy chunky yarn and it's going to be bigger i'm going to work with a us 11 size needle so that you can see that really well i want to explain what is going to happen here so this is the front and the cast on edges of course down here and we work this uh, and then it starts increasing on either side and then it goes up and it slightly changes on either side so you're going to want to follow the pattern Print out your pattern and get the back page, which has this nice chart here, and it will show you how it's going to shape, and we'll go over all the stitches that you need. The main stitch is a stocking knit, so it's knit on all the uh, right side, and on the wrong side is all purl. If you are working on a knitting loom, all the wrong side, which is the even rows, are all going to be still knit stitches, So because your knitting loom is all on the right side, so you've got those instructions there. And then it's all knit similarly. So we're going to start here, work our way back and forth, and then we'll do some make one increases and then um, make them at the front and at the back of the work wherever it's called out. Then we'll have some decreases in the stitches. So we'll have some knit twos together and some slip slip, slip, slip knit. And then you'll have all the tools that you need to work this. We'll do a bind off row and you can see how that row is worked. And then it'll just be worked in the opposite direction for the back. So let's get started on casting on. I'm going to start by making a slip knot and we're going to cast on 43 stitches. Now in this video, I'm showing it with a smaller cast on here and a larger stitch, you're going to use um, what's called out in the pattern. And because this, this stitch is so forgiving, um, this yarn is so forgiving, you can pretty much use whatever cast on you're comfortable with. I'm just gonna do a backwards loop or thumb cast on. It's really fast and um, just do it loose and it's not even gonna be seen on here and um, I like it a lot. So if you don't know how to do that, you're just going to pull out your yarn here. You start with your slip knot here Pull your yarn out, put your thumb down, twist it around, scoop it up with the needle and let it lay loose on your needle here. Do that again, put your thumb down, flip it around, scoop it up and then pull it taut. So you're just gonna flip it and cast on 43 stitches. For this small sample here, I'm just gonna cast on about 15 stitches. So I pause your video and I'll meet you back up when you've got the quantity you need and we'll get started. 
A couple of different tools I suggest having is a row counter and a stitch marker. The stitch marker is for putting on uh, the right side row when you first start that front row so you can tell the difference which one you're on. It's important on this one especially because the yarn is so fuzzy it's hard to really tell which side you're on. Then the other thing is a row counter. You can of course mark on your pattern where you are or you can just dial this around. There's different types of stitch, uh, row, stitch and row counters. Uh, this one is a dial system and when you get to double digits then you crank this left side here it's a little harder to go and there you go or there are different ones where you just click it like a stopwatch um, or some people have apps so grab you a row counter and I, I actually note it after I complete the row so I don't do anything until I've actually finished that row let's knit the first row together if you haven't made a knit stitch before you're gonna put your needle in between your first and second stitch go through that loop there this is the front leg of the stitch. Wrap around, that's the yarn over. Pull that through to make the stitch and then let it fall off, okay? Put the needle in there, wrap it around, pull it on through and let the old one fall off. So you've got two stitches on here. We're gonna work the uh, first row all the way across. Pause your video and come back and I'll show you how to make that purl stitch for the second row. Okay, we've worked our row one. You can put your stitch marker on if you waited until now to do it. Flip it around to that wrong side row and you're going to purl the stitches. I'm going to come up underneath this here because I'm working with a circular needle and I'll make sure and get my yarn up in the front. We're going to put our needle in through the front of this stitch, still on the front leg of the stitch but from this direction, from the right. And then we're going to yarn over and pushing that yarn through that way and then sliding the old loop off and then your new loop is on the needle. Go into that leg again and we're going to yarn over and purl. And so this the whole row two is going to be purled. If you were working this uh, in uh, on a loom, you are going to knit this row because all of your rows are on the right side. Go ahead and complete this row. And we'll meet back up for row three where we start making increases. Okay, we're on the third row. The third and fifth rows are going to be identical. And all the uh, even rows are going to be purl. So our needles are going to purl them. Now the uh, third row starts off with knit one. Fairly simple. And then we're going to have a make one. And we're going to be reaching in between these two stitches here. Okay. So we're going to put our needle in the front of this stitch. Okay, so it makes it really, really wide, right, and loose. We're going to put our right needle behind the stitch here, and we're gonna knit in the back of that loop. Okay, so now we've increased one stitch. We're gonna repeat that, so that do that twice. So we're gonna knit that stitch, okay, and then put our needle in the front of this stitch here, the really loose yarn. Put our needle in the back, okay, and then knit from the back loop. And we have increased by two stitches. Then we're just going to knit across until we have two stitches left. So pause your video as needed and I'll meet you back up. Okay, we have two stitches left. We're going to make one first. So we're gonna pick that stitch up, go into the back of that stitch, knit it. Okay, and then knit this next stitch. And then do that again. We've got that last stitch here, that really big part of the yarn. Go into the back of that loop, yarn over, and pull it on through to increase that stitch, and knit one more. Okay, we're gonna work our row, our next row, which is always the same, and then work another row just like that. I'll meet you back up for the seventh row. Pause your video, and I'll see you in a moment. We've completed rows one through six, and you can see how it's increased evenly on either side. And now we're gonna work on row seven. Now row seven only does it one time. So you knit once and then do one, make one. So reach into that front of that stitch. And you can even like move your needle to the front and then around to the back if you can't grab it with that pip squeak being so hard. And then um, you're just gonna yarn over Pull that on through, 
okay? And then work to the end of your row when you have two stitches left. And uh, I'm sorry, you'll, you'll work to the end of the row when you have one stitch left. So that is row seven and it's all alone like that. So work into the last stitch and uh, I'll meet you back at the end and show you that and we'll move on. Okay, we're at the last stitch. You're gonna pick that last one up, make one, knit that stitch in the back loop and knit the last stitch. Okay, and I've completed row seven and I'll move on to purling row eight and I'll meet you back for rows nine, 11, 13, 15, and 17 because they will all be worked the same way. So purl this row, I'll meet you back for row nine. Okay, we've completed row eight, and now you're on rows nine through uh, 17 that you're going to knit on the odd rows. So you're gonna work this all the way across knitting, and all the even rows you're going to purl in the back. So it's gonna be stock and knit. To look at it on this here, this is our chart. We have worked um, the first two rows, then we increased it at the front and the end of this um, row twice on rows three and five. And then on row seven, we just did it once at the front and at the end. And then now we're just working these next several rows to do a stock and net stitch. And I will meet you back for row 19. So knit and purl every other row. Okay, we have knit evenly and straight for several rows. We're on row 19. Here's where we'll make a left leaning decrease. We'll knit the first stitch and we're going to make a slip slip knit. And the way that you do this is you're going to slip knit wise one, two times. So, so slip those first two stitches and then you're going to load them back on the, the needle and knit from the back loop. And it's easier just to leave them on this needle and then scoop the left needle into the front of those stitches and then knit from the back of the loop that way. That makes it real simple. And you're just gonna to work to the end of that, then purl your next row and meet me back up for uh, row 21. Okay, we've completed row 20, and that was a purl on this wrong side back here. We're at 21. You can see how on row 19, we had a slip slip knit, which is that left leaning decrease. See how that's leaning there to, to the left? This row right here, 21, we're going to knit one and then slip slit knit twice. And then at the end of the row is where we will have a right leaning decrease and make a knit two together. So let's cover that now. We're going to knit one and then slip one, slip two, and then put our needle in here, front of these stitches here and knit from the back. Knitting those two together, we're gonna to do it one more time because it says to do it twice, so slip one, slip two. So where you saw those in parentheses, it's just showing the SSK in parentheses, so, and then it says twice, so we're just gonna knit those in a row twice, not doing another knit in between. So now I have two left leaning decreases. I'm going to knit until I have three stitches left. Pause your video and I'll meet you back at the end of this row. Okay, we come to the end here. I've got three stitches remaining. We're going to put our right needle into the front of these two stitches here and knit them together, both at the same time. So this will be a right leaning decrease and it's going to angle over to the right. So knit that last stitch and you've completed your row and then go ahead and start working the next row and I'll meet you back up for row 23. We're on row 23 and I wanna point this out to you if you haven't caught on to it before. Just wanna make sure and point out that whenever you see instructions with the parentheses around it and then it says a multiple number, you repeat this section right here three times total. When we were back on row three, you saw these two instructions with parentheses and you were supposed to do that twice and at the end you did this twice. So the same thing goes up here. I saw SSK by itself with no repeat and I only did it one time. This one we did it twice and then we knit to the last three stitches and then we knit two together, knit one and we had 49 stitches left. Now we're on row 23 and we're going to slip slip knit three times and then we knit to the last five stitches and then we knit two together twice and then we will have 44 stitches remaining. So let's work this row right here. 
And then once you know this, you're going to be able to finish up the rest of this pattern until you get to the next page. And we will meet back up after this. We'll meet back up on this row right here, the 44th row, and we will cast off the stitches so you know how to bind off or cast off these stitches and continue purling. And then uh, we'll give you more instructions from there. So let's do row 23. Okay, we're going to knit and slip, slip, knit three times. So slip, slip, knit from the back loop, slip, slip, knit from that back loop, slip, slip, knit, and then we're gonna knit across until you have five stitches left. So pause your video as you need. And meet me back when you have five stitches left. Okay, we have five stitches remaining. We're going to knit these next two stitches together like this. And knit these next two stitches together just like that. They're knit as usual, not in the back loop. And then knit your last stitch. And to examine our row, you can see that now this is angling quite nicely. This one has um, a slightly more um, gradual angle here, okay? Or, and then this one's a little more steep. Okay, so we're going to purl that next row and continue on in the instructions. You'll be going back into the making the stitches and going back up again and getting a little larger. I'll meet you back up after we get to this other row here which is going to be the 44th row, and I'll show you where we are in the pattern and how to bind those off. Okay, pause your video and I'll meet you back in a little bit. So I've worked to row 44, and of course my sample is about half the size of yours, so this isn't gonna look exactly the same, but these increases and decreases are going to look similar in where we've increased over to the left and then worked our way up a little bit and then increased a little bit. So on the right side of your fabric, it's gonna look this way and on the left um, edge, so the right edge and the left edge is going to be similar. Um, they shaped, they're shaped similar to how it is on the pattern here in this chart. And um, you're on row 44, you just finished this right side row, and on the cast off, which is also binding off, is this purl row, and you're going to want to bind off or cast off however many stitches it calls for. This row 44 is the same right way that your last row, which would technically be row 58, would happen. So you're gonna keep working the pattern uh, as it states here, we're on row 44, we're on the wrong side, cast off eight stitches and purl to the end of the row, continue following the directions, and then row 58 is really your cast off row. Okay, so we'll, it'll be on the back side just like this. You'll use these instructions again. So we're going to work the stitches in a purl. If you'd rather do a basic bind off um, in knit stitches, I understand, but you're gonna work it the same way if you work, this is called the end pattern. We're gonna knit this first stitch here and then knit the second stitch, or, or so I'm purling, I'm purling the second stitch. Either way, you're going to work that back stitch over the front stitch. Okay, that's binding off one or cast off one. We're gonna work the next one. This is, I'm still purling across. So I've got two stitches here. I'm gonna knit this over the back, lift it over, and then that's two. So every time I lift one over the back loop, that uh, counts as one of the stitches that we've cast off. And I've got three, and then you're just gonna continue going until you have um, cast off as many stitches you need and then continue in pattern. And when you're done with this entire thing, you will go all the way across all stitches. So once you've got the eight done on this row, you'll just continue purling across and then turn your work and then work the next row. Now this obviously isn't how your pattern is, but I've made mine at a very small scale. Okay, continue and I'll meet you back up after you're done. Okay, I came to the end of my 57th row and I have 10 stitches left. So we're going to bind off, we're going to knit those two stitches and then lift that back loop over the front loop and that is stitches bound off. We'll do that again 
and continue along until we have one stitch left. And then you're going to make two of these. I'm at the end, I'm on my last stitch, and so I'm just gonna simply pull that up and cut off my yarn. Okay, and then we've finished that, and so now we just want to uh, go ahead and put this into our work here. Go weave this tail in with your tapestry needle, and you're gonna wanna weave in the beginning tail and you could just loop that on through. This is actually on the back side, so we can just go through these stitches and pull it through. It's just gonna be hidden on the inside. And this yarn is actually very forgiving, so it'll just hide right in there. Okay, so that tail is now in here, and we can snip that off. We're gonna go ahead and do the same with our beginning tail and make that go inside. And then we're gonna work on the same, but reverse. So after you work your first cloud and you can go ahead and put in your embroidery, you can cast on and start working on your second cloud. Now I've cast it on and worked to a certain point. So I want to point out what I'm doing for the instructions for the back. You're going to see the chart that I, I've referred to a few times. It looks like it's about the opposite. So the instructions are to work from the double asterisk to the double asterisk as given for the front. And what that means is you're gonna jump over here and look for these asterisks beginning and ending. And then it jumps to the 19th row. So let's look at that. So we work, walk over to the front instructions, cast on 43 stitches. So this is the first part. And you work all the way up until this double asterisk here. So you're knitting all the way until this double asterisk. And then it starts at the 19th row. So that means you also are going to work the 18th row. So after you get done with that part, you jump over to these back instructions. So that's what I've done just now. And then I'm gonna start working these instructions. So if you are working off of the chart, you'll notice that this chart, and I'll fold it in half here, when you start here on either one, they look identical up until the end of the 18th row. Okay, so this was the front side here, and it has front here, and then the back. So now I'm gonna be starting here. You're gonna work all the same techniques that we talked about in the other rows, but of course you're gonna to have to pay attention to the slight changes that are in the back instructions. Now let's give your cloud a sweet face with embroidery. This is the right side of my fabric, and I want to put on this, this face here. It's showing a chain stitch um, diagram and how you're putting a chain on top of your right side of your stitches and we're gonna make this little face here. I want to show you with um, regular stitches here just in case you worked with the different yarns you can really see it. We're gonna make a chain stitch and I like to think about now I'm working from the right because I am right-handed think about this in the letter C and I'm gonna make it really cursive -y. so it's gonna be like this I'm gonna lay it right over where I want to start my little smile I'm gonna go over to the right so I'm gonna lay this down I'm gonna lock it into a stitch here where I want to start the curve of my smile and so I'm gonna go on top of uh, in the middle of this C and pull it through so that's my tail pull through all my extra yarn that I'm gonna use and then that's gonna lock that chain in. Now when I'm finished with this, I can just tuck that tail back inside. Okay, so now I wanna work on the next one. I'm going to make another little C, put my needle down inside there. It's gonna come from where this came from. We're gonna go downward and make sure and get that inside there, pull it through. And now I have a chain there. Make my C again in the direction I wanna go. Grab my stitch from the inside of that C. And then keep going on my little smile. So I've got three going down, I'm gonna go one across. Pick that up, it goes straight across instead of at an angle. Okay. Get my little C again. Pick that up. And I'm going to go up. Okay. 
and going up. Grab again for the inside of that. Angle up again. And go one more. So now that I've got my little smile, if I've got it too, a little too long, I can take this end here and just undo it because I've got it a little loose here. And when I get it to the point that I want it, I can just pull it on back through the back. and then weave this tail in. And then I've got my little bitty sweet smile. And then we'll just cut this one off and work that tail into the back and then weave it in. And then we'll just put in our little uh, eyes here. So I'll show you when I get them completed and I'll be putting it on the white part here. All right, I'll meet you back in a minute. So as you can see, I'm just stitching this up here. Now I'm showing this, of course, fast forwarded for you, but I wanted to show you uh, putting the mouth together here and just kind of playing with it and then adjusting the stitches with that blunt tapestry needle as I go uh, because this yarn is so fuzzy sometimes it gets kind of caught in that chain and on the eyelashes you do sort of this teardrop stitch it's not exactly like a chain so you just kind of play with it and follow along the diagram and adjust it as you go and um, make your own little sweet face Okay, hey, now that I have done my face on here, I'm gonna make another pillow, and I'm gonna make sure that the right side is facing up and on, on this side, and I can even make another face on the other side. And before we um, stitch this all together, uh, now, first of all, the, the instructions call for doing the face after, but I like it this way, that way I know that these little pieces aren't gonna come out. So before I move on and make my second piece, I'm just going to stitch this back in here and um, make a circle and then loop that back on through and do that a couple of times to make sure that my stitches are not going to be pulled out. Okay, and then I can cut this, leave it, um, leave it long inside. I've already uh, actually done these already. And they can just lay in here and I've got one more to secure and then you just make your second side after we've cast off of our last panel before you cut that you are going to um, leave a very long strand now if you've already done it that's okay um, but I what I did is when I was pulling my loop through I pulled out about three yards which is about um, three times the um, the circumference of one cloud. And so I pulled out really, really long and uh, pulled that through. Okay, so that's where it's bound off. And now I want to follow the instructions for finishing. We're gonna put the wrong sides facing each other. So I've got my little happy face here and it's lined up to the same outline and you can tell. And so this is the right side here and all the wrong sides are facing each other. I've got any loose tails um, actually knotted and they're just hiding inside. And then I'm going to take a blunt wide-eyed tapestry needle and we're going to sew, and this is, um, we're going to use the um, overcast stitch and then we'll leave a small space open for stuffing. Now you can work in either direction to the left or to the right, just depending on how uh, easy it is for you uh, working this stitch. Now, of course, I'm sewing it together with uh, this color and it's going to match. It may be harder to see on camera, so I'm only just going to show you a few stitches and then you'll want to finish that up and we'll stuff it and then finish that together. And uh, of course, now I have done the stitching for the eyes on the this panel first before I'm actually stuffing it because I found that easier for myself. So do whatever works best for you. So now that I've got my yarn coming out this back area here, um, it could be in the front of the back, turn it over either way. I'm gonna cut to the other side and I want to go down below this last stitch here. This was a cast off or bound off stitch here. And so we're going directly across in that corner, okay? And then I'm going to go 
back up underneath that one again just for security. So we're going to go straight across. We're going to um, one side to the back out the other and then we're going to come back around. So I'm going to come all the way around. I put all, I'm going to work to the right for here. I pull this out and that way my dominant hand will not get caught in all this yarn. Okay, so this is, it's gonna be pulling here. Got that nice and tight, not too tight, okay. Take our tapestry needle and we're gonna go over the top of it. That's how we get that overcast stitch. Go over the top and back to this front side here and then we'll work our way straight back. So we're going down a stitch on both sides and we're just going over just a little bit from that last stitch. So if you can feel where your rows are, your needle will hit right in between and you'll go between those stitches. Go ahead and leave your some kind of working cut yarn on the left side or on your non-dominant hand and pull that yarn through. And then come back again and work across. So we're going to continue working all the way around our cloud and leave an opening and start stuffing in your stuffing. Don't sew up this rest of this tail. Leave a long tail so you can complete the sewing. All right, I'll see you uh, in a little bit and we'll start stuffing this. I've finished sewing it up and then I've got this opening. I'm going to stuff it in. So I've got my polyfill here. All right, so I've got my pillow, it's all stuffed up, and we're going to continue sewing along and closing this up. I'll meet you back at the end. Okay, I've got this last little bit left, and before I finish, I'm just gonna kinda take my finger in here and work in those extra little bits Make sure it's as smooth as I want it. And that three yards was just the perfect size of length of yarn because I just have a little bit left. I did not have to add anything else. And I'm just gonna go back into one of my stitches and go back again, locking that in. And I go through a couple more that were down here and then go back inside. And then I'm just gonna work my tail inside here and pull that out. And then now, pull my needle out through the other side. Gonna pull on it just a little bit, clip it, let it fall back inside the pillow. Well, I hope you enjoyed knitting up your head in the clouds knit pillow. Thank you again for joining us. I'll be cloud watching to see what you created with these super soft and squishy pillows. On behalf of yarnspirations.com and Good Knit Kisses, I'm your host, Kristen, wishing you happy knitting. Bye-bye. <laughs>